Hello and welcome to my workshop. My name is Paul. I'm a luthier and grow maker based in Tasmania, Australia. In this series, I will share some of the projects I work on each week, giving you a glimpse over my shoulder as I work as though you were looking through the window into my workshop. So I've got the, wind, the sunshine streaming in through the window. Winter sun over here at the moment which is lovely to work under. I'm not sure how great it is for the video. So I'll just uh, pull the curtain over, I think, and... There you go, that might give us a better picture. So I've got a uh, piece of bone glued onto the end of the tip there, and I'm just going to uh, trim that back now. Um, it's a little more white in colour than what the, the original is right at the tip, but you can see the original is quite white um, sort of back originally, and then it's uh, sort of yellowed off right up at the tip there. So not a lot I can do about that. I might look a little bit into um, whether I can age that, that sort of fresh piece of bone a little bit more, see how we go. doing this mainly with a range of different files square off the end a little bit My head is not in the way. I'm not too sure where it's at, so I might even. Uh... All right, we'll try that angle. Hopefully, that's a better angle. My head, I think, might have been getting in the way before. I might be right in the way there, but I'm using my thumb as a guide to stop the, the file from slipping. Um, not sure how much of this will actually make the final cut. I can just hear my old uh, commenting friend from Sometimes it takes a few tries to get the angle that you want to work it on correctly. You don't want to push the file this way because you'll just break the glue joint and pop it off. It needs to be pushed into the glue joint. I don't really like uh, pushing the file towards myself like this, but you've sort of just got to take care and I'd rather poke myself with a file than I would damage the bows. So. You really can't see what I'm doing there. My hands sort of just take the whole thing out, but 
really is by feel. Shape going along there. It's not quite perfect yet. But... So the shape is coming along. Just uh, use a bit of sandpaper now to four hundred grit. Okay, so there we have a uh, extra piece on the end of the tip. It does uh, the colour match isn't spot on? Um, it's much whiter. It's new bone. It is bone. It's not plastic. It's bone. Um, you would have told that by how how fine the dust coming off and and how hard it was to file back. Um, but generally, if this this both being done up for for repair to be played, continue being played. Um, and I actually have only got to around 36 hours, 48, sort of 36 hours turn around on it from when it came in to having to go back out again. The, the player's got a concert at the end of the week, so um, I don't have a lot of time available to, to muck around too much. It needs to be done and, and gotten back out again. If it was going to be done up for sale or for, for preservation, sort of, you know, uh, work, I would probably suggest we replace the whole tip. Um, but in this situation, that will at least protect it. It'll prevent, it'll protect the nose from getting damaged on the bow, and it'll prevent the rest of that uh, that bone line of plate from being flicked off. So, um, you know, the only the only real issue with it is that the colour doesn't perfectly match up, and you can see the, uh, the, the how the the sweat and, and the the, the dirt has has changed the um, the colour of the the original tip anyway. So um, that's the tip on that one. There's a few other things on this bow as well, which I mentioned in the video, um, which which would have been uh, good to do for a sort of full restoration job. Um, one of those was reseating this ring in the uh, in the eyelet in the in the frog. Sorry, um, that won't be done on th this one this time around. Um, just as the the customer, the owner of the bow, has uh, has got such a short turnaround, um, we'll let him know that it, it could be done perhaps in the future, and he'll keep an eye on it. The bow is actually played in a uh, quite a tropical area of the world. It's played up in Queensland, um, and it gets quite hot. Um, that's part of the reason the hair, there was so much play in the hair, the hair with the, with the extra, um, uh, humidity in the air has, has stretched a little more. Um, so I'll need to take that into account when I rehair it, um, uh, make sure those tolerances are really fine. Um, And that's also partly why you get these sorts of things happening. The timber swells and then contracts with the with the humidity in the air. And that tends to, um, and then obviously a bit more sweat on the hands as well, gets in behind it and starts to, to break down the glues that hold these things together. So when you are in a part of the world that's a lot more humid, um, you just need to be aware um, of, of, of that those sorts of extra elements that puts the sweat in your hands, it does break down the glues and, the, and can get into the timber. Anyway, enough on that, we'll get on to getting some hair into this one.
a preliminary fit. Keep working on it until it drops in and fits. Okay, so in our fitting, there's my top fold, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. Um, nice even hair gap at the front. There was actually nothing terribly wrong with this old wedge. Um, now I believe I rehaired this back in uh, maybe 2010, so maybe 11 years ago. Um, so this wedge has been hanging in there for 11 years, and that drops in there fine, there's nothing terribly much wrong with it, ever so slightly uneven between here and here, there's a, whether that changes once it tightens up, but you can also see there's a fair hair gap in that, is, is, is the hair gap's just a little bit bigger than I'd like, and I'd say over time it's just compacted slightly, or uh, it may be that that wedge actually fits better than the one I currently make. So I'll hold on to that just in case the one I'm making now, that hair gap is a little bit too tight. Um, and I'll use the original one if I need to. We'll see how it goes. But I think uh, yeah, I'll make a fresh one for the, for, the, for the head. The wedge for the frog. Um, the original wedge that I made that 10, 11, 12 years ago is fine. That'll work. That'll work fine. And obviously the spreading wedge um, will need to be replaced. So I'll cut a new uh, cut a new spreading wedge to fit in there to spread the hair. Underside of the tip wedge, we just cut.
Are they still? Okay, so that's the spreading wedge. As it should fit and doing its job. Okay, and the hair goes in the head.
not that one, but I already know. I was already. So there's the finished re hair. Um, new leather winding, obviously, re hair. All cleaned up. And you can tell you see the difference there between when we when it came in. Sticks nice and clean. The head is nice and clean. And. The tip now has an end on it as well. That one's ready to go. Back to its owner and uh, should be good to go for the concert next weekend.